On this edition of the Sports Desk, we go back to see what team was best at West on the hardwood. Did the girls beat the boys? The Bishop Montgomery boys basketball team didn't disappoint this season. After dismal league play, what team was sparked in the postseason? We round up the City of Torrance baseball teams, and the Torrance Tartars once again take the league crown this season. But the North Saxons and the South Spartans have stacked rosters, we'll have to see. More special guests in studio to talk about softball. Get fired up, Sports Desk fans, because it starts right now. Hello and welcome to the Sports Desk. Just as the hardwood heats up in the madness of March, we still have some prep hoops for you. Let's get started. Let's wrap up the school whose basketball programs are making a statement of the Bay League and the South Bay. Hoops aren't the only successful teams coming out of the Warrior Athletic Program. Let's take a quick look at the winter sports wrap up. Maybe the highlight of the West Boys basketball team was playing on the Staples Center hardwood against Taurus in the downtown showdown, or maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was finishing 19-9 overall and 7-3 and in the Bay League. Next season, they will definitely miss the play of their stellar seniors like Brandon Yamada and John Lee, but the other starting juniors from this year's squad give them a good look for next year. The Lady Warriors also got to play at Staples Center. You can be sure that wasn't the highlight of their season. After gaining control and winning Bay League, seniors Nicole Nataki, Chanteline Trudeau, Shari Harada, and Aaron Olsen led their team deep into the postseason, beating their Division III AAA opponents by double digits until losing in the semifinals. Even with that loss in the playoffs, losing only one regular season game is pretty impressive giving West something to look forward to as they build a dynasty. On the mats, the West Warriors managed to break school records and gain another Bay League championship. Eight Warrior wrestlers won their individual Bay League titles, and Chris Lee and Matt Boson won theirs by pinfall. The 195-pound Boson is only a junior and will lead his team with others for another Bay League championship next year. The West Boys soccer team ended this season with a high winning percentage going 14-5-4 overall and 5-3-2 and in the Bay League. A disappointing end losing in the first round of the Division 2A playoffs with the talented underclassmen coming back. Next year looks better and the seniors, well, some might have a shot at a scholarship. The West Girls soccer team only had three seniors on its roster this year. Their highlights were winning two games against Losinger and one against Palos Verdes in the very competitive Bay League. Competing as an at-large team in the playoffs, they lost in the wild card game. But this team of mostly juniors looks to balance its offense and defense, making a strong run next season. The boys' basketball team didn't disappoint this season. As noted before, they made an impression on the Bay League, the fans, and of course the media. The girls' basketball team wasn't just impressive. They are much improved from years past. Reaching the semis isn't easy, so congrats to them. Boys' soccer wasn't the most exciting season, but there's a list of underclassmen who are looking forward to next season. The girls' soccer team reached the playoffs, enough said. The wrestling team took the Bay League, again dominating some of the other powerhouse programs. They also had eight individual Bay League titles and postseason appearances. Let's move on over to the Delray League. Bishop Montgomery basketball often sets a high standard in the entire southern section, which, by the way, stretches from the OC all the way up to the Central Coast. The boys team shined this season, and the girls had a few highlights in the last bit of the season. Let's take a look back. The Bishop Montgomery Knights boys basketball team capped off a great season this year, finishing with an overall 23-5 record while going 6-2 in the Delray League, led by Lamont Murray Jr., Leon Jenkins a third, and the steady point guard production of Justin Bivens. The Knights came in second place in the Delray League to Sarah, reaching the third round of the playoffs in the CIF Southern Section Super Division. They are poised to make a strong comeback next year. 
It was all about head games for the Bishop Montgomery boys soccer team, finishing the season in a slump and getting a third spot in the Delray League. They still managed to get to the CIF playoffs and look forward to a core group of players returning next season. The girls' basketball team came away with victories in three out of their last four games of the season. It wasn't enough to get them past Sarah and St. Bernard in the Delray League standings, finishing at third place. They visited the postseason once again, maintaining their strong reputation and keeping the tradition alive as one of the best basketball programs in the South Bay. The girls' soccer team's 7-10-2 overall record isn't as impressive as their wild card win in the playoffs, getting them to the first round, and they look forward to making a difference next season. The most successful team was a boys' basketball team as they got to the quarterfinals in the Super Division. The girls' team had a few good looks and a couple of scholarship contenders in the seniors. The soccer programs visited the postseason. Coming up after this short break, we're going to take a look at high expectations that the Spartan baseball team has for themselves, so stick around for more. What if you could ignite your child's love of learning with one after-school program? What if that one program was easy and fun? Destination Imagination is the one. Destination Imagination has taught teamwork, creativity, and problem solving for more than 25 years. A major university study showed our students are ahead of others in creativity and critical thinking. Learn more at startateam.org and make Destination Imagination the one for you. Let's start with some baseball previews. The South Spartans aren't even looking at last season. Rather, their tunnel vision is focused on the Pioneer League Championship. Returning six starters and three all Pioneer League players, satisfaction rests not only in confidence, but in their talent as well. Ash and Morgado, tell us more. That crack of the bat signals that baseball season is officially here. And for the Spartans of South High, they couldn't be more ready. These guys have been playing together for quite a while now and doing the right things in the off season. And uh, hopefully we can put all that stuff together as uh, we're in full baseball season now. The Spartans are bringing back six returning starters and keeping with that number. It's coach Grady Sain's sixth year leading this program. With all these positives stacked in their favor, the boys are confident that this season will be a great one. We look good. We got a lot of senior leadership, which is huge for us. Uh, good hitting. We've been hitting the ball really well. And then our two starting pitchers, we got seniors. So that's a big part of our team this year. Another major component returning for this team is the bullpen. Matt Bunch will lead his pitching staff, that also includes right hander Dylan Tobin and Aki Yamamoto, who are all solid on the mound. I had a lot of experience uh, returning on the mound between uh, Matt Bunch and Aki Yamamoto and Koichi Yamada and some guys that are really coming along, so we expect to really compete on the mound. Pitching isn't their only strength this year either. Coach Sane talks strengths of the Spartan squad. Our, our ability to put the bat on the baseball in, in uh, one through nine, and uh, we do have good team speed, so uh, we're a threat on the bases, and just defensively being able to make plays, make the routine plays. This team is already off to a great start. The Spartans have won their first four games, with two of the games being away. Playing on opponent territory was a struggle for last year's squad, who made it to first rounds of CIF playoffs, but went 4 for 13, went away. That is something that this team knows they need to focus on. You know, our plan is to play every game like it's our last. You know, uh, coach always pushes us to give it our all every day. You know, our motto is practice winning every day. So this year's Spartan squad seems to have it all. The bats, speed, depth, and most importantly, the attitude. One thing is for sure, this Pioneer League will be exciting to watch. For the Sports Desk, I'm Ashley Morgado. Thanks, Ashley. A quick look at the key returners for West, for South, rather. <clears throat> Matt Bunch and Dylan Tobin are starting pitchers for the Spartans. But uh, look for Aki Yamamoto to make an appearance on the hill. Gunnar Johnson and Mike Esparza are all league returners. Hayden Finley is at third base. Let's take a look at another Pioneer League team. As the North baseball players wrapped up their winter ball and dusted off their sacks and uniforms, they realized they were lucky. The core group of players, of mostly seniors, think they've got a secret that no other Pioneer League team can bring, and it's not just in the pitching of Herb and Weir. Brittany Johnson, why don't you bring this this story? It's a beautiful day at North High where the Saxons are on the field preparing for another season. They might have the same jerseys, equipment, and players as last year, but they say this is a brand new year. 
Daniel Heggie says this year the team has great chemistry and that will be useful on the field. We've got a good group of seniors this year and, uh, you know, I can't wait to uh, keep going with the season and all because it's, it's going to be a great season. We're, we're pretty stacked this year, so um, I'm really looking forward to it. Last season, the Saxons went 13 and 19, but they really aren't focused on the big picture right now. Our main goal is to win one game at a time. Jack Kennedy says this year is also different from last year because they have more experience. This year's team's a lot more connected. Last year we kind of we fell apart towards the end of the year because we kind of started arguing and we didn't really know each other as well as we do now. So and it wasn't. And now that we're all seniors, we're all excited to be here. Head coach Mike DiMaria has been with most of these players for a while now. I love it. You know, he's young, so we relate to him a lot. He helps with our problems. We all love Coach Mike. He's like one of our friends, really. We all respect him, and he's a really good coach. Well, I've been out here with him for four years, and he's just been great to me. Loot, teach me a bunch of things I've never learned before, so I respect him as a coach. Di Maria says not only have they developed as players, but through the years, he has watched them become more mature. Oh, well, I've seen him grow as young men, you know. You know, when they're younger, you, you get a lot of immaturity, but... You still get it, but for the most part, they're uh, they're past that, and you know what? They're ready to have a you know big year, their senior year. Getting them ready for their senior year comes naturally to the young coaching staff. We're not too old. We're in our mid twenties. You know, we're not you know old grandpas out there. You know, we're you know we're a young staff, and we relate to the kids well. It's still early on in the season, but the Saxons say they might have an advantage over the other teams this year. They have eight seniors on the team who have been playing together since they were kids. Everybody works great together because we've been playing since we were in Little League. So everybody knows each other and we know what we, how we play and what our strengths are and what our weaknesses are. So we kind of all work together to balance each other out. Players say the team chemistry between the seniors helps them to set good examples for the younger players. We're all natural leaders, really, when it comes to showing the juniors and the sophomores how to play, and we all work really hard. You just got to push the younger ones and let them know what's up, because this is our last year, and we'd like to make it to CIF this year, so push them as much as we can. The Saxons have been working hard during the off season. They came out this year and won their season opener. Despite their win, they say it's too early for any season predictions, but they do have a message for other teams. Whoever's in front of us, we're coming after them, though. That's all we know. Reporting from North High, I'm Brittany Johnson with the Sports Desk. Thanks, Brittany. It's good to see you here at the Sports Desk. The Saxons look to pitchers Dalton Erb and Hayden Weir to lead them from the mound. Three year varsity starters, Corey Bishop and Andrew Mongaro, will set the tone for sure. Also, look for Jack Kennedy and Matt Jarnas in the lineup. Jarvis, rather. It's the bottom of the second, and the Torrance baseball team is in a peculiar spot. They're down the usual number of returning players, with only Tyrone Taylor and Walter Sketch starting last year. Having won four out of the last five Pioneer League championships, they're still motivated to maintain their high standard. David Gascon reports on what the Tartars have to focus on and keep in the race. Spring training is already underway in the major leagues, but prep baseball is right behind them. Coach Turner and his staff have a lot of work ahead of them this spring as they get down to the basics and the fundamentals with the Tartars. While this Tartars team appears to be well balanced in terms of age, their varsity playing experience might expose a severe weakness for the club. Going into the season, Torrance has two players. Yeah, you heard me right. Two players returning to the starting lineup. Now for most teams that might be a cause for panic, but maybe not for this team. Let me reintroduce you to Tyrone Taylor. If you remember back in the fall, he was terrorizing opposing defenses as a running back while leading the Tartars football team on a magical run through the CIF playoffs. With his helmet and shoulder pads being retired, Taylor returns to the diamond to pick up where he left off last season. The center fielder was a junior, batted 473 last year with six homers, 26 ribbies, and 42 runs scored as a leadoff man. Needless to say, the dude can spray the field, and he makes pitchers work. Taylor will be batting third in the Tartars lineup this season, so look for him to have another huge year. Now along with Taylor is the catcher, Walter Sketch. The senior batted 341 last season with 11 RBIs, but most of his work is going to be behind the plate. He's looking to add some stability to a young roster and instill some confidence in the young pitchers. A couple of those are seniors. Jake Renz and David McKellar will be returning to the staff. Renz had an impressive 1.62 ERA last season, but it was only 26 innings pitched. So mark your calendars, folks, because it looks like the biggest challenges for these Tartars 
will be on April 4th and 6th against South, and on April 18th and 20th as they have a date with El Segundo. Thanks, David. The Torrance Charters are short on the key returners, only seeing Tyrone Taylor and Walter Sketch, but that doesn't mean they don't have the talent and won't be in the Pioneer League race. The reigning Bay League champion West Torrance Baseball Club has come into the season with not many seniors, but plenty of talented ball players in their lineup. There are good things cooking in their bullpen, but reporter John Lewis explains what else you should expect from these hungry warriors. The smell of fresh cut grass is in the air. Chalk lines are being drawn, and spring is knocking at our door, which means baseball is back. For your 2011 Bay League champion West Warriors team, the set goals and optimism remain high. Addressing the postseason, we definitely like to go deeper into the postseason. Um, you know, looking forward, that'd be good. We hope to generate that, you know, sort of momentum in the during league and in some of these tournaments. Hopefully, you know, be competitive and getting some big games and stuff, so that we're prepared, ready to go in the postseason. We want to win El Segundo Tournament Championship. We made it. We made it to the uh, championship last year, and we we just want to get that win. And um, we want to repeat uh, Bay League Championship. We feel good about this season. We're hitting the ball right now. We're playing good defense, so I feel good about this season. The Warriors can certainly drive in big numbers as they put a 17 spot on the scoreboard in their win against Bishop Montgomery on this day. They'll continue to look to juniors Joey Notch and Tommy Ellison for some offensive firepower at the top of their lineup. I try as best as I can. I mean, KC went three for three today, and there's a lot of people, a lot of people coming up clutch today. And yesterday too, we 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 really did good against uh, El Segundo, 12 to five. Joey and Tommy are just two great competitors. You know, they they um, you know they're they're athletes. You know, they play they play multiple sports, and that's something that we're, they, we get really excited about because they're able to get the team spirit going. And uh, when they're out here, you know that they're giving you an honest effort. When their offense might be having an off day. West Torrance can usually rely on their defense to get them by. Whether it's Tommy digging balls out of the dirt at first, or Joey flipping two with his double play partner at second, Javier Galvin. Yeah, me and Javi, we work well together. Our whole our whole team uh, works well. Tommy Oslin, first base, he um, digs the ball phenomenally, so I give a lot of props to him. I think our defense, the depth of our defense right now is, def is our strength. And the area that we need to work on, obviously, is just executing on offense. You know, we're going we're gonna to be a team that needs to do a lot of situational hitting and, and that sort of thing. And so as long as we continue to improve and we can basically produce and execute when the pressure is on, we should be good. And don't worry about the heat training these guys too much this spring. When Wes needs a little pickup and some lively chatter, Coach Cueva knows exactly the guy to turn to. That'd be Barry Thomas, the best cheerleader probably I've ever had. <laughs> the West Torrance High varsity baseball team has racked up 119 wins, has appeared in five CIF playoff appearances, and has won three Bay League championships under head coach Juan Cueva since 2005. Unfortunately for the Warriors, they lost in the first round of CIF play last year. So heading into this season, they'll look to regroup, refocus, and retool. Reporting for the Sports Desk, I'm John Lewis. Thanks, John Lewis. The key returners in the infield, Joey Notch, Tommy Oslin, and Javier Galvan, along with pitcher Tyler Hinckley and football player turned outfielder for the spring is Barry Thomas. They're already proving to be a formidable opponent in this preseason. And that's all we have for you for prep baseball on this episode. We'll have some preseason Spartan baseball for you next week. Stick around because after the short break, we have some in-studio guests to talk more about the fast pitch national tournament coming to Torrance. Never look a howler monkey in the eye. Fried ants are delicious. We finished a clinic in our in a rainstorm. Really? That was a confidence builder. My students actually ended up teaching me. Yeah. In La Keg, a la Keen. Think managing a sales team is tough. <laughs> Try working with five different villages. My alarm clock was a rooster. After two months, I was ready to quit, but after two years, I didn't want to leave. I didn't know I had it in me. Turn two years of service into a lifetime of experience. Welcome back, and as promised, we have in-studio guest in North Head Softball Coach Howard Miller. Welcome, how are you? Thank you, how are you doing? I'm doing great. We're actually here and we have him. We're going to be talking about the Torrance National Softball Tournament. You were one of two teams that was invited, obviously the host of the Torrance Charters. How excited are you and your girls for this? We're very excited. We see it as a great opportunity. Okay. Basically, this is going to be a little bit more of a competitive play than you get in the regular Pioneer League season. Not that they don't have competitive teams here, but what are you guys going to gain from this? 
all these games are just going to get us battle tested for league and then on into playoffs. We're really looking forward to it. That's right. Well, talking about playoffs, you guys, as a Pioneer League team, you've had more success in the postseason than you have the Pioneer League season. Uh, what are you looking at this year? We're looking at both. We want to win league and, and win CIF. Okay. Talk to me a little bit about maybe the heavy competition that they get in travel ball, which is obviously kind of what you're going to be getting in this tournament, and how maybe that translates to what you guys are going to be expecting in the Torrance National Tournament. Well, they face stellar competition year-round. Uh, pitchers face the tougher hitters. The hitters face the tougher pitchers. And, you know, we, that should bode well for us to, to enter this kind of competition where they're going to be facing nothing but, but good pitching all the way through and, and the pitchers are going to have to test their mettle against the hitters. Are they a little bit nervous about that? They might be a little nervous, but they're going to rise to the occasion. They're, they're because of the experiences we've had in, in, uh, in league and playoffs, making it to the CIF finals uh, three years in a row uh, recently, uh, I expect them to do really well. Okay, so you might not know anything about these particular teams you're playing from Nevada and I think one from uh, Northern California, but what do you, who are you looking to bring big power as far as at the plate? Well, we have several kids that they hit the ball really well. Uh, Who's that? Coco Tawali'i, our shortstop, has a lot of power. Vanessa Gonzalez, our center fielder, has good power. Gabby Fordiani, our senior catcher, has power. I recognize all those names because last year they were really some of your star players. That's not all, though. We're not going to leave out a few of the others. Who are you expecting defensively? Defensively, well, it all, for us defensively, it always starts with our shortstop, Coco. Mm -hmm. She's hands down, the, I feel, the best shortstop in the area. Uh, she has an incredible amount of range. Mm -hmm. uh, she kind of spoils us. Uh, especially on pop-ups. The, the outfielders and the other infielders tend to take the play off when the ball goes up in there because they're used to her going to get it. Well, I've seen her since she's a freshman, and I remember when she was a freshman, the seniors touting her, and she's really just proven herself. You have some pitchers that are pretty stellar. Who are you looking for this season? Oh, Kelsey Cairns is our returning ace pitcher. She's a returning all-area pick. Uh, led us to an undefeated season on, with her work on the mound. And then behind them, we have a junior, uh, Amy Rodriguez, mm -hmm. and a sophomore, Sydney Overly. Okay. Are you looking to maybe play certain pitchers in this Torrance National Tournament, or are you going to kind of just rotate them all since it's really just not league? They're, they're all going to get work. Because of the guarantee of five games uh, in a short amount of time, they're all going to get work. Plus, we've got games... Uh, immediately uh, before and immediately after uh, with, as part of our non-league schedule. So we're going we're gonna to be facing a lot of games in a short amount of time, so they'll all get work. What would it be like if it was you and the Torrance Tartars in the championship game? Uh, that would be uh, awesome. Well, the way the brackets are set up, we could meet in the semifinals, okay. not the finals. But that would be, uh, that would be a feather in both our, our caps, I'm sure, to, to be able to face each other okay. in, a, in a big game like that. Well, coming up after the break, I'm going to have uh, Kelsey and Coco in studio. Why don't you give me a little bit about maybe why you chose them to come in studio? Well, first and foremost, there are captains. There are co-captains. They've, they've been through the, the wars with us for the last, you know, this is their fourth year now. Mm -hmm. they, we feel they best represent us, uh, the kind of team we have, the kind of kids they are, the, the kind of kids we like to have on our team. They're both very well-rounded. Uh, they've got their teammates, uh, the good of their teammates at heart when we make decisions. And coming up after the break, we'll get the real lowdown on what these girls think about Coach Howard Miller and a whole lot more, so stick around. What disables more children than Down syndrome, spina bifida, or fetal alcohol syndrome? It's a birth defect virus called cytomegalovirus, or CMV. CMV attacks one in 150 babies born in the U.S. One in five of those babies will suffer lifelong disability. Get the facts. Learn how to protect your unborn child. Visit cmvfoundation.org. 
Welcome back. And in studio with me, I have the two North softball captains, Coco and Kelsey. How are you, ladies? I'm good. How are Great. you? Doing well. That is nice to hear. How excited is your team about being able to play in the Torrance National Tournament? We're really excited because it's going to help us for league. That's right. And uh, you guys are looking to maybe do better in Pioneer League play. You've uh, always had success in the postseason. But, Coco, let me ask you. Tell me about what your expectations are for league and maybe how you can parlay your competitive play that you're going to be having in this tournament into hopefully a successful league season. Um, we're planning on winning league and taking it all. So we taking can. Taking it all. Do you think that this competitive play in the tournament is going to help you at all? Or is that just, is it so high of a difference that you're just going to kind of maybe try and keep the momentum going? Um, hopefully we can keep our confidence level high and so we can carry that into the league and hopefully win league too. Okay. And Kelsey, why don't you tell me about who your expectations are as far as who's going to do on the tournament and maybe who can really turn it on to carry you through league and postseason? Bree's been a really good hitter and she's stepped up in all the games we played and Sydney's a good hitter too and Megan also. Okay. What position does Megan play? She plays right field. Okay. So, what do you think about your coach, Howard Miller? We, I, I told Howard that I was going to get into this question, so I really want to know. What do you think? He's great. What <laughs> makes him great? Him. He's he, always there for yeah, us. Like, he supports us mm -hmm. throughout everything. He'd give us his shirt on his back if he had to. That is very nice to say. Why don't you tell me about where you're going to college, Kelsey? I'm going to Cal State East Bay. Okay. What are your expectations as far as the rest of the Pioneer League season? Um... I think we should, we're going to do really good, and our goal is to win the whole thing so it can help us for CIF. So. Okay. What about yeah. you? Where are you going to college? Um, I'm going to BYU. Okay. And you actually verbally committed to them last year, right? Yeah. How many other schools were chasing after you? Um, I don't really know. Or I don't know just, a number you're too off humble the top of my to head. Say, right? <laughs> no. I, yeah, I don't know. No. <laughs> okay. You already said you want to take it all into the Pioneer League. But really, what are your expectations after league? After league to win CIF. That's our team goal. Okay. What was it like as a freshman starting and then <laughs> you guys had success? Tell me about that and maybe how you personally, how you want to really take that and do well and how you're going to motivate your teammates. Um, it was definitely an adrenaline rush um, being out there on the field. So I want my whole team to experience that. And the way we can do that is making it there. So I guess we need to make it there. Okay. Kelsey, what are you going to do to motivate considering you're a captain and a senior? I'm just going to try to do my best on the mound so that we have a chance to stay in the game and score enough runs to win. Are you nervous about this tournament? No. <laughs> you're not. It's, it's higher competitive play than what you're used to considering you guys are just facing, you're not just facing teams in California. Does that make you nervous at all? I usually don't get nervous. Okay. <laughs> I just go what, and pitch. What does make you nervous? Talking in front of people. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Well, last year, I can tell you something. Honestly, I can honestly tell you that when I went to these North softball games, these ladies are not quiet on the field. <laughs> Who would you say between the two of you is the more go get them teammates, yell at your teammates to get their heads back in the game? In a nice way. I don't know. I don't know. It's like I'm just even, like, oh. I guess. Well, I mean, yelling at people, I guess. We're not a team of yellers. Yeah. I mean, yelling in like a fun and exciting uh, way. We both kind of, it's equal. Yeah, it's equal. Well, that's good. Well, thank you so much for coming in studio. Now I'm going to tell you guys at home how you can get in touch with us. Please look at the information on your screen. You can tell us maybe about some things that we don't know about already. Give us a call at 310-618-5762. You can always email us at thesportsdesk at torrentca.gov. And you can view all of our shows online in torrentca.gov. And don't forget, all the shows from 2010, 2011, and 2012 are on YouTube. It is a couple of weeks away, but don't forget, you want to go out to Wilson Park March 22nd, 23rd, and 24th to catch all the talent at the Torrance National Softball Tournament. Ladies, thanks so much for coming in studio with us today. Will you please do us the honors and take us out? Okay. Till next time, Torrance, play hard.